We go to Germany now, thanks to our friend Freiheit in the Anniversary of the Man Producers Club, who called in and wanted to talk about how the protests in Germany are being so badly suppressed. And we heard this before from Ben Swan, even about a month ago, because the day before I had covered the story, oh, yeah, there's decent sized protests happening in Germany. And he was like, yeah, because the headlines were 17,000. And that was, yeah, there was one area where there were 17,000 people. Hugely, hugely underreported for events that had hundreds of thousands, if not millions of participants uh, rebelling in Germany. And I want to point out this New York Times headline first. The New York Times, and this is behind a paywall. I'm not logging in. I'm not paying for it. I don't know if, if Jim was able to pull the whole story. I don't really care. I'm reading the headline and the byline, and this is enough for me. Far-right Germans try to storm Reichstag as vir virus protests escalate. Who are these far-right Germans that they're trying to slander with this? Nazis. Nationalist socialists. The subtitle here in the New York Times story is Germany has handled the pandemic well and its government enjoys high public trust. The minority opposing coronavirus rules includes a far-right faction that worries officials. This is really shameless propaganda by misrepresentation and <clears throat> association. If I wanted to convince the American people to, to uh, I, I don't know, uh, support the invasion of, of Afghanistan and uh, imposing martial law on it for decades or Iraq, oh, well, there are a few people there who really hate you and they're representative of the whole. We couldn't possibly go in with a surgical strike to take out bin Laden and the terrorists. Uh, we're going to use this as an excuse to, to, to blow up the whole country. And they call this, a, it's a far-right faction that worries officials. Now, there's one other thing in this subtitle already I have to dissect. Germany has handled the pandemic well. Yeah, because they've got to the point where people are protesting and they have to. And, and again, it's government enjoys high public trust. Really? Is the New York Times trying to say that the German people are gullible and stupid and easily misled by their government into doing horrific things? Hmm. There might be an historical truth to that. But before we get to that. I don't think we need to cover that side of history. I don't think the people in Germany still trust the government the way they once did. You know, maybe they learned a lesson. Maybe, maybe they're learning from history that their government should not be trusted. And now it is all the more painfully apparent when we see the crackdowns on the corona policy protests. Who are they calling far-right Germans? Nazis, National Socialists. So I just got to point this out before we get to the next part of the story, that according to the New York Times, socialists are now far-right. Just exposing how meaningless these left-right terms are, this... this because what, what is left and right? Different flavors of statism. I don't care about left, right. I care about ethical, unethical. Nice guy, asshole. Tyrannical, freedom respecting. That, that's what counts. And they don't want you to see it that way. They want you to argue over different flavors of statism. So that you don't notice that America has a one-party system with the Republican red team faction of the American Socialist Party and the blue team fighting against each other over flavors of statism and distracting you from the fact that their real purpose is, again, 
the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. They got to serve their corporate and banking class sponsors. So let's go now to the BBC, Germany coronavirus, hundreds arrested in German anti-corona protests. Police in Berlin have arrested 300 demonstrators during protests against Germany's coronavirus restrictions. Some 38,000 people took to the streets in the city for mostly peaceful demonstrations. Later, hundreds of protesters, many from the far right, tried to storm the Reichstag, home of Germany's federal parliament. A number of people who were arrested and German politicians condemned the attack as shameful and unacceptable. Some of those involved had insignia from the far right Reichsburger Reich Citizens Movement. Vice Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Nazi symbols as well as Reichsburger and Imperial German flags have no place in the German Bundestag. Pretty sure this is a big government socialist. They're, they're actually calling themselves nationalist socialists, and you're calling them far right. Yeah. This is just silly. I mean, I. I do these tactics work on people? Do people believe this shit? I guess it has to have some effect because this is they, they wouldn't if it didn't. Earlier, some 200 people were arrested at one rally, which the authorities blamed on right-wing agitators who were said to have thrown stones and bottles. Now, I, I, I got I to point something out here, too. The, the uh, Reichsburger, the Reich Citizens Movement, uh, might actually be far right, by what most people think of as, as far right and whatever silly left right spectrum the, the German authorities have the, the people believing there. But I guarantee you that there's not a single one of these organized groups that isn't fundamentally socialist. Even if they don't come out and call themselves Nazis. I mean, again, the Republicans in the United States, they're socialist. Yeah. Well, okay. It'd be better to say they're Marxist more accurately, but socialism certainly would encompass this as you know the, the concept of collective ownership. But let's 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 call a spade a spade. We have all ten of the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto, at least partially in effect in the United States, and some completely. The Republican Party supports most of the policies behind that. And somehow they have fooled people into thinking that they're for smaller government, while even under Trump, government has grown. All right, but let's go back to Germany. Earlier, some 200 people uh, were arrested throwing stones and bottles. Rallies protesting against coronavirus restrictions took place in other European cities, with some demonstrators calling the virus a hoax. Now, this is where the, the, the precision of language is, is so important, because the virus itself isn't a hoax. And they will try to call you, as we pointed out earlier, coronavirus deniers, if you call it a hoax, if you don't acknowledge exactly what the authorities are saying about it. It's like, how can you not be a, a coronavirus denier, even if you endorse the current government narrative? Because then you're, in, you're denying the government narrative that they were feeding us two months ago. Thousands gathered in London's Trafalgar Square to protest against issues, including coronavirus restrictions and 5G. Signs reading masks are muzzles and new normal equals new fascism were held up. Similar protests took place in Paris, Vienna, and Zurich. And this makes me very hopeful for Europe. Possibly leapfrogging the United States for freedom. We'll see how we come out of this. Are they having a stronger reaction? In Europe, they're having protests that are being suppressed by the media and the police violently put down. In the United States, they've tricked us into fighting amongst ourselves instead of fighting the real capital, or the real enemies in the capital, right? What happened in Berlin during the day? The rally had originally been banned. Yeah, they just ban rallies. No, sorry, you can't. No, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. No, not really a thing here. The rally had originally been planned, but a court eventually allowed it to go ahead. Police ordered one group near the Brandenburg Gate to disperse for flouting safety rules, then arrested 200 after stones and bottles were thrown. Now, you, th this could have easily been an infiltrator agitator setup. Think about it. The police are going to confront people for, hey, you know, guys, please put your masks on. We care about 
you know, the safety rules. This is for safety. Please respect the safety rules. And most of the protesters go, no, with all due respect, we're going to peacefully disobey. So the cops send in one agitator to throw a couple of bottles and stones, and now it's a violent protest that is fighting the police, and the police get to go in and crack skulls and arrest 200 people. As Berlin police said on Twitter, unfortunately, we have no other option. All the measures taken so far have not led to compliance with the conditions. No, you do have an option. Not enforce compliance. How about that? Protesters were closely packed in places and sat together on the ground at one point. A second group of about 30,000 met peacefully close by to hear speeches. I'm more inclined to believe the BBC's numbers, but still probably not accurate, not inclusive of, of everybody who's been participating. Among those arrested was cookery author and conspiracy theorist Attila Hiltman, who had addressed crowds through a loudspeaker, although Germany has so far not seen the wave of cases affecting some parts of Europe. Its infection rate has been growing. New cases, new case numbers are reaching highs last seen in April. Oh, you know what? They must have gotten that new test with all the extra false positives. That's definitely going to you know, make your COVID infections go up. So right-wing extremist who was involved in the Berlin protests Seven police officers injured. Some police, some protesters then broke through a court at the Reichstag building and were dispersed by police using pepper spray. And there, there are videos coming out of this. By the way, Jim, if you scroll way down in the video, I see uh, this is my favorite protest mask so far. The guy with a metal grate hanging over his face with, with a little orange string and a black headband. Is, yeah, like, do you want me to wear a mask? Fuck you. I'll, I'll wear this. And of course, the story has to conclude. Yeah, that's it, Jim. Is that Europe is seeing a second rise in cases. There's a new wave in Germany and Spain and France. Yeah, it's and what other measures? The most effective. So the the country, according to the story of BBC, the country was one of the most effective in enforcing the framework of response referred to as prevent, detect, contain, and treat. Of course, we got a catchy slogan makes it easier for us to point guns at you and beat people up for disobeying. It has been particularly effective in keeping the death rate among the over 70s lower. You know what? I think this this might be just, uh, you know, maybe I'm being racist against Germans. I'm allowed to. I'm half German myself and I'm half Jewish, so I can be racist against anyone I want, right? Oh, and I have black friends, so it's totally cool. But uh, the thing about the German mentality and the culture of, of you know, uh, a sort of, you know, German work ethic and uh, a sort of direct precision and, and you know, a, a matter of fact basis about a lot of things, you you would think it might make it harder for the government to lie uh, about fatalities and things like that. And, and I think that uh, all the things that lead Germans to be good, good engineers and clockmakers and, and auto manufacturers and things like that, right? I, I think that might make it harder for the government of Germany to lie as effectively as they are in other places. And if you look back to, you know, who they're saying was in this, they can't, you know, uh, one demonstrator, I, I just, they, they had to include this one quote. And again, BBC being that much better than the New York Times, at least in, you know, giving a, a, a glimpse of the other side of the argument. One demonstrator, Stefan, a 43 year old, Berlin resident told Agence France Press, I'm not an extreme right-wing sympathizer. I'm here to defend our fundamental freedoms. And while they are experiencing dark days like the rest of us, to see what's going on in Europe with the protests and in Germany in particular gives me great hope for the continent.